Good afternoon and welcome to the Demolition Daily live stream. I am your host, as always, Mark Anthony. Um, so last week I announced that we would start winding down these uh, Demolition Daily live streams as we start to return to some sense of sanity. Um, funnily enough, the last few shows have actually uh, been amongst our most ever watched uh, on IGTV, even though the number of people that watch live is, is slowly reducing as people go back to work. Anyway, I, I, I thought it better in advance of actually calling it a day with these things. I, I should take a look back and have a look at, at exactly what it is that we've done. Um, and yes, believe it or not, I do actually prepare for these uh, these shows. Uh, as part of that preparation, I look back at the, the other episodes that we've done, to just basically to remind myself of the, the number of guests that we've had uh, that have been kind enough to join us on the show. Um, and while I was doing that, I discovered to my horror that I apparently can't count. Uh, although today's show is billed as episode 41, there was no episode 36. I've no idea what happened there at all. If that isn't confusing enough, we've actually thrown in a few one-off special episodes along the way over the last nine weeks. So this is actually episode 48. Uh, I, I'm not even going to be, begin to explain that. Uh, all of which, I guess, proves that I can run a magazine, I can run a website, I can even write a book or two, but I can't host a live stream or even count to 50. Now, getting on to the show itself. Once I got over the shock of the fact that people were actually tuning in to watch this old nonsense, um, I drew up a mental shortlist of the people that I really wanted to appear as guests. Uh, I managed to get the uh, National Demolition Association President, Chris Godek, on very early days. Uh, unfortunately, the former IDE president and old mate of mine, uh, John Woodward, is in lockdown in a location uh, where the internet connection is apparently hand-cranked, so that one's not been possible. But today I can tick off another name of uh, from that list uh, as I'm joined by Richard Dolman of AR Demolition, who is set to become uh, president of the Institute of Demolition Engineers later this year. As a first-generation demolition man, Richard is, isn't weighed down by the baggage of tradition or tainted by received wisdom. As a result, his company really marches to uh, the beat of its own drum, which is, is something I've admired for quite some time. So I'm delighted to welcome Richard on the show. Good afternoon, Richard. Hey, good afternoon, Mark. Good afternoon, uh, all viewers. Yeah, all the, the the millions and millions around the world. Yeah, well, you know, the, the handful. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I was just explaining, uh, for those that don't know, uh, AR Demolition does very much march to the beat of its own drum. And I think one of the things that, that I've admired that you've managed to achieve is, is the care that you take of your workers. There's a real camaraderie within your organisation. But how did you reconcile that with continuing to work through um, the current lockdown? Yeah, interesting. So we, um, uh, when when this really started to ramp up, and when uh, Boris made his first big announcement, that turned into a uh, a nearly two a.m. Um, start in the uh, well, finish in the morning for us of the following day. It, it took us a little while to. Um, dissect and interpret and understand uh, what what Boris and his team uh, wanted, and then communicating with our workforce what we what we believed he wanted, and and then looking at uh, all of our individual projects to see what we could do with it. Um, and and so we had a late night, and we put it all together, and um, worked out what projects we thought we could continue with, what what projects fitted with them. Uh, fitted with within the government guidance. So, did you have to put any in place any specific measures to safeguard the, the workers during that uh, that initial uh, fallout? You know, was it was there special training or equipment or anything like that required? Yeah. So, some sites we shut down immediately because we felt that they just weren't safe, and it was it was almost like going back to a, a standard risk assessment and doing a risk assessment for every every job. And then were there any changes to be made? And and we, we went through job by job to see which, which projects we could continue. And if we felt that they fit fitted, you know, as we went through a risk assessment, did everything come out with a, a low risk at the end? And if it did, continue. And have those jobs that have that were closed initially, have they reopened or are you still in lockdown on some? No, some some have some have reopened and some haven't because we, we just believe with some that we can't um, initiate um procedures to keep it keep it right other projects we've managed to change things we've had some really good understanding clients that we've said to them look we can do this if we slow down the, the soft strip phase so we can keep social distancing make sure that we've got everything correct um, and 
clients were really good and said, yep, yeah, great. You know, we want, we want, we've got a duty of care um, and we want to make sure that you're, you're doing it, you know, safely. And so that's satisfy them as well. And w- once we worked it up between us, we were, we were good to go again. It's interesting you should mention clients because uh, uh, obviously that is one of the drivers that we're, we're going to face as we slowly return to some sense of normality. Do you think clients are, are just going to have to get used to the fact that some jobs are just going to take longer while social distancing is still required? Um, yeah, well, uh, so far, you know, touch wood, every client that we 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 deal with have, have been really good about this. I think, I think a lot of the reason they're being really good about it, this is a rare occasion where we are all in the same boat battling the same uh, the same enemy so i think clients are understanding that things are going to take longer or need to be done differently but i also i think the the bigger picture is is what projects are going to be actually happening in the future and that i think that's that's because like like hey look, look what we do in demolition i don't mean we as in just ar i mean the demolition industry the there are some great companies out there really innovative you know companies that i admire what they do and that's what we are isn't it we 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 our, our role in life now is we we come up with solutions and that's what we're having to do with this on that, just on that, the, the subject of innovation. I mean, I, I know from from speaking to you over the years, you, you are a very keen and vocal advocate for uh, training. Have you put any special training in place for the COVID crisis? Yes, we have. We have. We with training to you know, we started at all levels with our um, project managers and our site managers and our and our staff. And I, it's one of those things where. The, the, the team just seemed to be embracing it because I think now everybody understands the severity of this. And it was it's a very different dynamic now to what it was at the start of, of it because um, I think we were all sort of thinking, you know, when, uh, that this is a um, something that we've got to deal with for a few weeks. Now we're all realising, we've got a realisation we could be dealing with this for years. So we, we've, we've got to come up with ways of dealing with it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're talking here about a, a sense of physical health and, and physical well-being. But as as we discussed yesterday on the show, uh, this is the beginning of our Mental Health Awareness Week here in the in the UK. I, to my mind, the industry has made a lot of noise about increasing awareness. But it, given how closely you work with your workforce, are we doing enough to address the actual causes of mental health issues in this industry? You know, things like you know, job security and, and getting paid on time and, and, and even isolation of workers uh, uh, sort of working away from home from a, a, for extended periods? Yeah, well, the mental health, you know, albeit it's mental health week, so if, if I'm uh, really honest, I've, I've not picked up on it being mental health week this week, but we, um, we've we sort of got a, a culture in the organisation where um, we've introduced all of our guys to a construction skills app that they can use as a tool and we're registered with um, Mind Mind Matters on that program, and we've got a thing in place. We've got a confidential number that our team can ring, and they do. You know, we've had some take take, take advantage of that, not take advantage, use utilise that facility. And I think the industry as a whole is doing a pretty good job with it. Um, but then, with this actual situation, I think it's as important for some people um, that that they are at work because perhaps perhaps they live alone or financial pressures we've we've had people approach us about um they want to be at work for various reasons um we've actually we have some staff furlough but we've got a rotation system we've got one individual that was really didn't want to be at home so we um we worked something out for her so she got somewhere to be because she wanted some sort of contact and it's it, it's not up to us to just say no you are working from home it's up to us to find a way yeah i think that's a very interesting take on it it's i mean i'm not suggesting for one moment this is is a problem ar demolition but some of the stuff that i've read about you know rises in things like domestic abuse and that kind of thing it's not just a case of a sweeping statement well you stay at home and and you not go to work it's a lot more nuanced than that and it's it's interesting the fact that you've you've taken that on board um you are scheduled to become uh, president of the IDE later this year. I will save my proper congratulations for when that actually happens. Um, I mean, I, I guess the first question is, is the AGM going to take place to allow that to happen, uh, given 
current social distancing measures? Yeah, so currently the, the Council of Management and uh, myself and, and Gary, the president, we're having, we're, we're in some dialogue, we're in regular meetings and we're talking about seminars and CPD and what, what we can best do for our members and, and the AGM. And we've, we've not got a definite answer yet. I don't want to sidestep the question, but the truth is we've not got a definite answer. It's a very important AGM, this one, um, because this one marks the graduation of our first lot of, lot of uh, foundation degree students and the, the MSC students were having a graduation ceremony. So, you know, we, we want to make sure that we put something on good for, for those people and their families. And then, and also it's, it's, we, we, you know, there's all the other formalities with the IDE. We just want to make sure that we, we, we get it right. We've looked about, should we do it online? Um, and we're, we're looking for various ways, but the, the, the key thing is, is as well is what do our members want and the the general feel is at the moment is our members are concentrating on a lot of things um and ide perhaps not their full priority at the moment no absolutely i i fully understand that i mean i i i, I was fairly critical early on that you know maybe the trade associations not just specifically in demolition but you know as a wider uh, a wider body i don't think they were particularly active but the, at the end of the day you know these are still people that have got to go and do a, a day's work and, and and stay safe themselves so it's it's, it's a hard balancing act i think i just had a comment in here from uh, peter haddock uh, who i know you know um saying congratulations he's a bit ahead of the time but 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 then he is very forward thinking is our peter um <laughs> I know it's a little way off, um, and and obviously you know there's there's no guarantee that the uh, the AGM will necessarily go ahead in its its usual form. But have you given any thought to any sort of theme that your presidency might have? I, I, as I say, I mean we've already touched on the fact that you're a very keen advocate on on training, and I know you've been very very closely linked to the degree courses and that kind of thing. Do you have any theme in mind, or are you just <laughs> are you still planning that for the next few months? Yeah, no, I've. I've... I, I think something that I'm, I'm very, very passionate about, and I have been for a long time, is lessons learned. You know, I'm always banging the drum about um, the, the, you know, any anybody in any walk of life that doesn't have that moment when they say that was close or or have an incident or is, is I've always said isn't telling the truth, and we we all have them. And a big thing for my me is people sharing lessons learned you know what could what 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 did what went wrong there or what could have been done differently and the big theme is is trying to lift the lid a little bit on um on on lessons learned that's something i'm really keen on because if we can get get out there with lessons learned people can hopefully prevent things going wrong in the future but we're, we're always too keen to hide it away yeah, I, and unfortunately, I mean, I, 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 I think it's admirable the fact that you're taking a lead on that, but it's, it's, it's whether you can get the industry to follow because there, there is still that, that desire to keep those sort of things tucked away and uh, out, away from prying eyes. I mean, we, we certainly saw more than our fair share of scaffold collapses last year, for one, for one example, and you know, it, it wouldn't have been beyond the wit of man for people to have actually published details on on the whys and the wherefores, but that didn't happen, um, and we're still waiting for that. And unfortunately, I think with the current lockdown as it is, we, we're probably not going to see that for quite some time yet still. But, you know, as I say, hats off to you for for, for pushing that as a, a, a as an aim. Um, while we've been talking, we've had a, a few... We've had a few uh, bits and pieces coming in here. It's Peter Haddock again. Uh, one of the questions he's asked, and again, I think it, it reflects back on on your advocacy for training, that kind of thing. The challenge of bringing new people into the industry. I know I was at an open day that you held at your facility there for uh, school and college leavers to, to get them in excited about demolition. But how do we do that? Um, I'm particularly given the fact that we are... <coughs> looking down the barrel of a, of a downturn in, in demand, but we're still going to have a, sh a skill shortage. How do we go about addressing that? Yeah, I, th I think I think we've got to continue to professionalise the industry. Um, we've got to move forward with the times. Technology is key, you know, it's, it's, it's and, and promotion of the industry as well. But I think technology is a big thing. Um, it, it's, it's demolition still got this stigma of, of you know it's, it's something that you do if you, you, you or one of those things that you do if you can't do something else and it's just so not true now i know that pretty much everybody in the demolition industry knows that it's getting the message out there that it is a professional industry there's a lot of good skills in it there's a lot of good careers in it 
and we've got to promote that. But to promote that, we've we've got to you know we've got to learn from. You've touched on some incidents that happened last year. We've got to learn from those, make sure they don't happen again. Good press is a is a is a good thing to to um, to get get out there of when people are doing really good, innovative, um, exciting things. We've just got to attract people. They all seem to be so attracted at the moment to the the digital age and um, and and you know a lot more modern things. And uh, um, it's it's somehow we've just got to lift the image of the industry and then promote it. Now, you mentioned the digital age. It's interesting that you should mention that today, of all days. Um, th there's two things that, that, that strike me with that. One is you've just done, uh, you just issued a press release on the fact that you you carried out some quarry demolition that used, at least in part, uh, a, a best part of a 100-year-old steam tractor, which is hardly innovative. I would, it's, it's clever, but it's hardly innovative. But then... I. Going back to Peter's question here, he's asking a question here about uh, things like you know 3D machine control and GPS locations and all that sort of thing. I mean, you, uh, again, without trying to blow smoke up your rear end, I think AR is is one of those innovators in, term, in terms of equipment. How do you how do you see that panning out in the, in the months and years to come? You know, the, the use of of more advanced tech and, and more advanced equipment. Yeah, so in particular with with 3D modeling, um, getting ourselves well. Um, um meshed into the bim type things i think that's very important and the use of, the use of the technology there what you can do now to model a site and then to illustrate how you're going to do a project plan your equipment plan your resource it's it's endless what what uh, you can do with the digital side of things do you think the? I, I mean, I, I I watch a lot of this sort of techn technology stuff on on YouTube, and I, I'm a a big fan of uh, Peter Haddock's podcast um, that that looks at a lot of this sort of stuff. Is I I just get the impression that, that civil engineering and quarrying and mining are going full tilt with with adopting this kind of technology, and yet I I don't see it making huge inroads in demolition as yet. It, I, I and I realise all those those businesses are very very different, and their requirements are different. But are are we lagging behind, or is it just a, a case of you know, when the job arises that, that needs that sort of technology, we can call upon it. Well, that's it's interesting those industries that you just picked up on there because they're industries that quite often are led by big corporate organisations that have got you know resource in place for a, a department to research this and research that. You know, the demolition industry is really good at um, at. Um, not getting itself a a good price to do a project and i watch prices driven down and down and down all the time sadly i watch that done by a lot of corner cutting and you know quick do that when nobody's looking or um and you know i even find our, our organization um trying to compete sometimes with people that are trying to do it a diff completely different way and 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 sadly margins are very tight in our industry and and then if margins are tight, can we invest in the things that, that quarrying, mining and those things are investing in? And, and there's, there's not that much left there to do that, you know, it, uh, um, and, and, it, and it's very difficult. But for me, I've, I, you know, I, I recognise where I want my company to be and my company, I, I want it in a world where we can do the proper projects for proper people that want to pay a proper price so that I can invest in, in growing technology and hopefully then attracting the, the right sort of people into the industry. There's, there's too much second, third, fourth generation. We've always done it like that. And that's, that's what we need to get away from. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I have just touched on the fact that you've used a, a steam tractor. I, <laughs> for those that haven't seen it, what, what was the story there? How did that come to be? Yeah, so um, uh, steam engines are a, are a hobby of mine. Um, and a friend of mine got me involved in it about eight, nine years ago. It's, it's strange, really, because I'm, you know, traditionally I like uh, uh, sports cars and racing and all that type of thing. And a friend of mine got me interested in this this equipment. And you know, I've got a respect for machinery. I love machinery. I love to be around machinery and, and industry. Um, and uh, my friend's got a, a, an engine with a, a big, a large winch on it. And we got a, a problem in a quarry to. Um, bring a conveyor belt um, housing um, up a large ramp and there was no real safe way to get down to it. So the only real safe method to get all this um, this conveyor belt system up was to, to winch it up. 
And the, the default setting was, right, I'll, I'll get a winch in and I'll winch it up. And then I just thought, you know what? I'm sure that Avis, Avis is the name of the engine, could uh, could deal with this. Let's uh, let's look at it, do a risk assessment and see what the client thinks. And away we go. And, and as much as AR myself have a reputation for innovation and doing things differently and new, sometimes there's a method there staring us in the face. And if it's if it's not broken, let's not fix it. No, absolutely. I, I, the, the thing that I took away from that was, you know, I, we, we often hear people talking about the fact that the demolition industry is a, an industry that solves problems. I think that was that was solving problems writ large. It was, you know, here's a, a unique problem. What can we do with this? I have an idea. And and to, to do that and to do it safely and to do it effectively and to, to implore it from the client, you know, hats off to you. I, I don't think many would have even thought of that. But, uh, yeah, as I say, hats off to you for that. No, and, and, and coupled up with that as well, it, um, um, in, the, in the smoke box of the engine, we had a, uh, a large gammon joint, a large beef joint, and the entire team had a, a gammon and beef sandwich at the end of the ship. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if you'd have mentioned that before, I'd have, I'd have made the journey up to see it in person, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> a, a way to a workforce is, uh, is uh, through its stomach, and that certainly worked. No, absolutely. Look, Richard, I, I, I know you've got other things to do. I know I've just uh, caught you as you've come off a, a radio interview as well. So you're a, you're a busy guy. You're a guy in demand. I really appreciate you joining us today. Um, best of luck for the future. I will speak to you before you become IDE president. But, um, you know, in advance, congratulations. And I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. And uh, and, uh, and just, just one point, Mark. That I think this this uh, this pan pandemic's brought out in us all. Uh, for me, there's definitely a... Uh, a much better communal uh, community spirit around them than what there was. And if there's anything, anything good to come out of this, it's that and, and seeing people doing what they do to help each other. I think it's amazing. And, and you know, the, the well, everybody's saying well done to the NHS and all that, but I think well done to everybody that's, that's getting stuck in the way they are. No, I, t I totally agree. I, that's been a, a real driver for, for me. I, as I say, I've, I've mentioned Peter Haddock. I've mentioned Nick Drew on, on previous ones. You know, on my side, on sort of journalism, it's not a case of, you know, trying to stitch each other up. It's, it really has been a, all hands to the pumps. And let's let's big each other up, which I think is a, a marvellous thing. Uh, if we can carry that forward, I think we'll all be in a better place. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. I'll leave you to it, Richard. Thanks ever so much for your time today. No, thank you. Thank you. Right, we've still got the comments coming in. Great interview, Mark. Oh, oh, well, yeah. I, I just set these people rolling. I don't have a great deal to do with it. I just ask the right questions and, and let the, the experts say what they need to say. Uh, Shane, um, Shane Pace, um, who was a, a previous guest as well, love this. Thanks all. Um, that's fantastic to hear. Um, where are we? Let's have a look. Um, Paul Bokes is back. Thanks for joining us again, Paul. It's been a busy one today, actually. I, I've seen comments streaming through the... Uh, through the, the the screen as I've been talking to, to Richard, uh, so I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, I have mentioned Peter Haddock a couple of times, um, and I'm, I'm going to do a very quick plug. He's not paying me for this. He should, but he's not paying me for this. But uh, Peter's got a new um, podcast series that he's doing in conjunction with the good folks over at uh, Leica Geosystems. Uh, I heard the first episode last night, um, and he's, he's speaking to a guy called Chris Matthew over at Flannery Plant. Go and check it out. Go and check it out. We've, we've just been talking to Richard there about innovation in, in the demolition industry. If you want to get a, an idea of, of the way that the construction industry is headed, listen to it. Really, it really is that good. It's 40 minutes, and it really does lay you out a roadmap of the way that the construction business, the use of technology, and that kind of thing is going. So really do try to check it out if you possibly can. Uh, just had uh, my old mate Roy Brown uh, on there. Great interview, Mark. Well, <laughs> No, not really. But uh, Richard, as always, does deliver, as you rightly say. So thank you very much for that. Um, just one final thing before I go. Um, because I've been in lockdown and because we haven't been able to get out on sites, you know, I, I am a, ultimately a writer. That's what I do for a living. Um, and, and I must admit, I've been a little frustrated that I can't go and see demolition and various other bits and pieces. So I've been flexing my um, writing muscles, not in a book at the moment, although I do have a vague idea of where the next one's going to go. Um, but there's a, a website called medium.com, which allows uh, writers to publish work much like a blog, no, no, nothing particularly clever. Um, 
But what it has allowed me to do is to take a look at some of the stuff that's probably on the, the periphery of what I would normally write about. And, you know, just as I say, just flex the writing muscles a bit. Um, one of the articles that I wrote, which wasn't re even remotely aimed at the demolition industry, it was written basically to tell other people what the demolition industry is really all about. Uh, it's an article called Demolition Debunked, in which I try to explode a few of the myths that... Uh, the Joe Public and the wider media, mainstream media, would have you believe about demolition. And it's gone down remarkably well. And it's, it's even gone down remarkably well in demolition circles, which, as I say, it wasn't really the target audience. Uh, when I put this um, show over on YouTube, uh, I will add a, li a link to it. But if you have a look at my LinkedIn profile, Demolition Debunked is there. It's, it's fairly early days, I think. Um, have a look, see what you think. I, I am kicking myself slightly because one of the things that drives me absolutely mental when I see the media talking about uh, demolition is their reference to things like, you know, the, the building was knocked down by a bulldozer. Well, we all know the, the reality of that. Um, but I, I did, did, didn't even mention that. I was, I was writing far too fast to, to engage brain, I'm afraid um had a couple more um comments here uh, i'll put this one up i'm not sure the link will work particularly well here um but that's where you can find peter's podcast i will add a link to that in the show notes for today um let's have a look rich holt uh my mate cobbles thanks for joining us rich i, I know you were uh, involved in that um, steam tractor job as well um because I've, I've seen you in your in your outfit doing your thing with your, your steam engines as well so uh, congratulations on that i think it was a a remarkable job um i will add a link to that when i get to to actually publishing that and we are going to feature that job in the next issue of the demolition magazine as well now i have been babbling on for the best part of half an hour i'm sure you've all had enough i think the comments have stopped at long last so thanks ever so much for joining us today uh thank you to richard as always excellent value um the, the, one of the things i like about richard as i said at the very beginning is the fact that he's not he's not weighed down by tradition or you know that's the way we've always done it he 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 takes a, a a real overview. He takes a step back and, and looks at the best way of doing a job, not just the way that the industry has always done it. Uh, and I hope that came across in that interview. So in the meantime, I'm going to let you all get back to your day jobs, assuming you still have day jobs. Um, I'm going to sign off for now. As always, um, stay safe, stay positive, look after yourself, look after your family, your friends, and your colleagues. I'll be back here again at 3 p.m. tomorrow, same time, same place, as always, for the time being. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all then. Thanks ever so much for watching.